Hey, Sal people. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to rebuild a Haldex all-wheel drive pump for the rear diff here. Before we get into this video, this is not a perfect how-to. I did the best that I could with the camera quality that I had. Honestly, do not attempt this unless you are positive you can do it. If you have experience doing jobs like this, this is very, very in-depth and difficult. Next up is why am I doing this? In stock right now, they don't have the proper Borg Warner pumps. Uh, I tried a bunch of aftermarket pumps, none of them worked. Only genuine AC Delco pumps work and the Borg Warner aftermarket pumps, both things of which you buy on like ESOB or um, E-Euro parts. Those are the only two uh, proper replacements. My pump was dying and uh, I tried all the other aftermarket options that were less than $200 and I ended up having to return everything because none of them worked. They were all for uh, systems with higher amperage, so other models of Haldex 4. Two uh, size four Allen key bolts right here and then the pump will fall out and get a clean container to uh, reuse your all-wheel drive fluid. Now before you get started, you wanna make sure you wipe all this stuff down and uh, get any dirt that could fall into your clean container out. You wanna pull this plug right here, not this lower one, but the second one up here. If you follow the cord up and over, there's another one that you can see right back there. You need to unplug that one as well. So I'll go ahead and reach my hand up there and you may need to drop the rear diff bolts here and here in order to uh, get that harness out. So I'll tug on it real quick. Yep, I rounded it that way. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and drop this with two 18 millimeters. So I'll reach up top and pulled it out. It's on the other side of this bolt here and pull these two bolts and then we'll start tugging on this. This is what's called the stator. It stays stationary and it has magnets built in. So it's gonna be a little tough to pull off, but it's just cause it has magnets on the inside. Now we're down to the bare bones here. This thing is worn down pretty good. We are gonna go ahead and take out the rotor. So what we're gonna be using here is a vise. So you kind of just take this, take it and put it so that this section here of the metal and this section here of the metal are sitting on top of the vise and the rotor is hanging down and not hitting anything. Now you're gonna need a, uh, I'd just go with a light duty hammer, and you're gonna need a long skinny nail. So there's a shaft that you'll be able to see on the inside there, it's sticking up. You're gonna put this in here. Go ahead and tap that shaft. Start pressing out. There we go. Now it's separated. All right, here is the rotor. As you can see, this section of the rotor here is very worn down. Here's our replacement. And there's also brushes in the electronic section that will need to be replaced as well. But this is the most serious part here. So go ahead and grab a uh, exacto knife or some kind of a razor blade. So as you can see, there's a bunch of little ridges here. You can't just pull on this because there's wire wrapped around each one. So slide your X-Acto knife underneath one of them. And you can kind of lift them all up like this. You want to bend them all the way backwards. Now that the fins are bent backwards, you can go ahead and slide the little wire loop that is around each one of them all the way off using the razor knife. Okay, so now that all those contacts here are bent backwards and the copper wire that's surrounding each one is slid off, take your screwdriver and you're gonna put it behind the copper section here and you're gonna start tapping it with a hammer into the vise so that it slides off of the shaft. 
much. But once you start tapping on the copper section itself, you'll see a little bushing on the back and you can start hammering that instead. And that'll get you some better progress here. I knocked it right off with the hammer. So that's how you wanna have it. And you can see, probably, I hope you can see all of the little individual loops on here. There's one right there, they're a little flexible. You can see all the individual little loops that need to go around the other side of the contact. So you can slide the new one on and it goes on very easily. Now take very gently a pair of these pliers here and bend these backward about all the way. Grab a pick. You may have to pull on them just a hair to get them to go on to these connections here. Now they're all wrapped around. So we're going to take that exacto knife again. Push them back up. As you bend them, you want them to be right in the crease that you're going to fold. So go ahead and keep pushing them every little bit that you start to flop them over. Tie them up. There, now they're mostly folded over. Go ahead and take your pliers and squish them right down. There. Now those connections are made, make sure this pushed down all the way. Do not try to take out this backside bearing here. Otherwise, you will break off the back of your housing, like I did. There is this seal down and in there and you will have to take a pick and dig it out like this, and it goes flat side down. Now to make sure that that's seated in all the way, grab yourself a seven millimeter socket. Well, for my case, it's a six because I'm missing a seven, but I would really prefer a seven. All right, I'm gonna opt to not replace those brushes. Go ahead and take this. I'm gonna lay it over so that the electronics in this thing are this side up. Go ahead and take your shaft and push it through. Might have to do a little bit of hitting just to get it to go in. So right quick, I'm going to draw you a uh, diagram with rectifier bridge. Um, when you're putting the shaft back in, pretend that this pen is the shaft. When you're putting the shaft back in, you are also at the same time going to have to pull these brushes backwards. So pretend the pen is one of the brushes, they move in and out like this, they're on a spring. You need to push them back in, don't push them back in super far, just far enough so that you can get the shaft through. This part may require two people or just a lot of patience. Um, push your brushes back out this way. The brushes barely wear themselves, it's really just the rotor that wears. So now that we've replaced that, I went ahead and pressed it all together just like we took it apart. So now I'm gonna put the main uh, pump back together. This is all the stuff that came out. First off, this thing here. So you can see there's little pistons that push up and down with a spring. That's these little nubs here. Here's what it looks like when one's taken out. It's just a little nub with a spring in it. And sometimes the springs separate from the nubs so we want to push those in, make sure it looks like that. It's all put back together. So what you go ahead and do is you put in one of these, a flat side down, side with a little ridge in it, up. You put that in, then you put in your little roller bearing. Then you do the same thing again with one of these, except you have the ridge side down, flat side up. So exact opposite because you want the little roller bearing to ride around inside the ridge that's on there. Then you put this in upside down so that the pistons go in squishy way down. There's going to be a side with holes in it. You want that facing up. This is difficult. Tip it to the side so it doesn't fall apart. It may take a couple of tries. Flip it upside down quickly. Make sure it smushes up and down. Once that's done, you take this black ring and you push it in. It only fits one way. There's three little ridges on it. You have to make sure that all three are lined up. This plate, there's gonna be two smiley faces on the inside here. The other side has one. 
the one with one, you have facing upward. Two smiley faces down, one smiley face or frowny face in this sense goes up. So I went ahead and put the first screw in so that it stays together. But if it's making a frowny face like this, you want the wires to be coming out the bottom of the frowny face towards that way, just like this. Then go ahead and take your filter and it presses on. Just like this. Put your last two screws in. With that guys you have hopefully successfully rebuilt your cross your drive pump or at least have a better understanding of how the system runs or can be repaired uh, this video took me a ton of time and research and trial and error to get this to work so please consider subscribing uh, i put a lot of time and effort into that entire video so uh Anyway, I will see you in the next one. I have another video coming up for a complete drive shaft rebuild and uh, refurbish. So that is going to be uh, some fun as well. Uh, that should be finished in the next week or so. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.